Gentleman yields back. The chair recognizes the gentlelady, the ranking member from Texas, Ms. Jackson Lee. Good morning. Let me just um, start again where I uh, mentioned uh, a few themes that I had in the opening statement. And let me acknowledge uh, both Mr. Johnson uh, and Ms. Dean and thank them for their presence here today. And now colleagues uh, here, Mr. Chairman, on the other side of the aisle. Addiction uh, is the bane of our existence, and that is a light word, demand. Can you just succinctly tell us uh, the crucial aspect that that is playing as we go forward in fighting, in essence, I'll uh, use an old-fashioned term in this war that has to include bringing down demand and then warring with those, unfortunately, who are intent to do evil. Thank you, Congresswoman. And what I would describe this as right now is a fight to save lives um, because we are losing Americans every single day. In terms of demand, I think that what we are seeing with these two cartels is different than what we have ever seen before. So we acknowledge and understand that there are Americans who have su substance use disorder and may be seeking controlled substances, narcotics. What we are seeing now is that these two cartels are making fentanyl, which is deadly and deadly in tiny amounts. And the cartels are acting with calculated, deliberate treachery to put that fentanyl in other products. And so they are making, mass producing, last year DEA seized 58 million fake oxycodone pills. Pills that were meant to look identical to real pills, but in fact are fentanyl and filler. And they are marketing them and branding them as though they were the real thing. So they are driving demand in our view. They are also cutting fentanyl powder into other drugs, as you noted, into cocaine, into heroin, and they are selling those drugs as if they were cocaine or heroin. So fentanyl is being cut into everything and it is being put into these fake pills. So what we believe is happening is that the cartels care about relentless expansion to make more money, to make billions of dollars. So they are using the most addictive drug that the United States has ever seen, and they are hiding it in other drugs, and they are branding it as though it were legitimate prescription drugs to drive demand, because the more people who take it, the more it's 50 times stronger than heroin, 100 times stronger than morphine, the more likely people are to become addicted so, so and buy again. Thank you. Let's talk about the fight. Um, my time is short. Can you succinctly describe the lab that the DEA has set up? Yes. Uh, so we have recently set up a new lab. We have nine labs. We have a new lab called the Joint Intrepid Lab. That is an EPIC. Uh, it's in El Paso, Texas right now. We have set that up with, we asked FDA and Customs and Border Patrol to join us. It is a fentanyl profiling lab, with the idea being that we will immediately test fentanyl as quickly as we can as it gets seized at the border so we can determine who is responsible for making that fentanyl, what it is made up of, and also have an early warning system for future drugs. It will help our investigations. It will help our cases. Convince the American people that you are fighting the cartels with every bite that you might have. As you do that, um, the uh, incarcerated uh, kingpin, El Chapo, um, his work doesn't depend on high migration, low migration, border conditions, et cetera. He is a, or the type of work cartels are doing are a merciless, murderous, and with a large imprint that goes no matter what's going on, we have to get the cartels. Is that my understanding? I, I could not say it um, more clearly that our top priority is to defeat the cartels, and I believe that's what we have to do. I will say to you um, that there is nothing that DEA will not do to protect the American people from what we are facing with fentanyl. We're using every authority we can, and we are tracking these two cartels in more than 40 countries around the globe. They are vast criminal organizations. And one thing I think is really important is we targeted and arrested El Chapo. That was a DEA case. 
we have now pivoted to not just do the heads of the organizations, but to target the entire supply chain, starting in China, going to Mexico, coming into the United States, because and then the illicit finance. Let me ask. Uh, please. Let me ask you this: How devastating is the online sales uh, that penetrates into our younger population or everyone? The pink pills. How devastating is that, and how important it is to have legislation or to have Congress help you? fight the online pill sale. The gentlelady's time has expired, but you may answer the question. Thank you. Uh, we see social media right now as the super highway of drugs. It is one of the ways that the cartels are using to reach out to every single community in the United States of America, to reach young people. There are more than 100 million Americans on social media, and so it is a very simple, largely anonymous way for them to reach people, and they're also using it to conduct their own business operations. Thank you. I yield back, Mr. Chairman.